Here at Graffenbeer, we have not really slowed down much. There's a little bit because the major construction is not as fervorous as it was before. We put in 1.1 billion worth. We've still got 50 million next year and still several hundred million dollars of MILCON in the out years to realize, including a new central issue facility for our troops. We have two full combat brigades here in Grafenvir and the largest live fire training area outside the United States. And there are projects to go in there. Um, my staff, the DPW, has not grown nearly as quickly as our buildings have grown. Uh, the Grafenvir side of our installation, the main post, went from about a full body of 800 active duty soldiers to 3,000. So we've increased quite a bit here. We have the largest army PX and commissary in USRA. I was the chief of EBG for the garrison, and I worked directly with the Corps of Engineers and the Baudienstelle, which was the special office of the Bauamp, created specifically to handle all the EBG projects. And we considered ourselves one team. It was invaluable to have everyone together. But you can't just put people together and expect it to work. What, how, the reason this project worked, and it worked so well, is that all the people who were co-located had the ability to make decisions and make things happen. If we had problems, we could pull the leaders from the core, the leaders from the Baudingstel and myself together, and we could chart a course of action and make it happen literally immediately when anything came. And I pushed very hard after I left the EBG cell and became the DPW to keep the Baudingstel here as a permanent party for the continuing construction. And that appears to happen, although the Baudingstel has went from its own office to become a, a field office of the Omberg. But our continued relationship is great. Um, in fact, recently when I went with uh, our main project manager from the Corps of Engineers to a meeting, we introduced him as part of our team. We don't see a distinction between Corps and DPW because we're not. We're all U.S. Army. We're all here for one goal and one purpose, and that's how it works best. And there's total trust between our organizations. That's another thing that's required to make this work. And the trust is based on two things. One is people do what they say, and the other one is they're competent and have the ability to do what they say. And we were lucky in the fact that all the people out in our organization are three-tiered, well, not really tiered, but three partnership between BDS, core, and Garrison. Everybody pulled their own weight and worked very well together. Um, in fact, we're the model for the U.S. Army for this kind of stuff, and we've already given uh, guidance to Vincenza, who's coming online with their EBG, and Camp Humphreys will be having their, well, their version of EBG, maybe EBV for Vincenza or EBH for Camp Humphreys in Korea. And to date, we are still maintaining that partnership, uh, regularly go to the core and have meetings and partnerships because we've still got probably well over 100 projects going on aside from the EBG and the large mill cons. There's 150 housing revitalization in Vilsec um, and numerous other projects. The majority of the projects had very similar challenges. All the company ops, the 28 company ops, seven motor pools, the commissary, PX, and new hotel all had major environmental considerations. They had a lot of phasing. There was issues about appropriations coming late. There were a lot of uh, differing site conditions, changes required during construction, uh, changes such as the regulations for the secure rooms, class five doors in particular changed. We were able to get together and work on that. We were the first base in Europe to institute the new standards with our new buildings. Um, and having the Baudingstel as a team member, they get our permits for us. They deal with the local environmental people, the local regulatory agencies, which would be extremely difficult without their partnership. And the Corps has a huge reachback ability with experts in uh, environmental, unexploded ordnance, mechanical systems, electrical, and all the specialties that are required in huge major projects like we undertook. And, um, we as the garrison were basically the liaison between the customer and the core. And the core managed the main projects and was our conduit to the BDS. And although we shared information freely among all of us, any actual contractual issues or 
management of the contracts was strictly kept from us to the core to the BDS. We never circumnavigated that because to do that then people wouldn't know what was going on and you create real problems and there's been places I've worked at in the past where people don't use the chain properly. And of course we could do that because all the professionals at the core knew what they were doing and like I said we had that bond of trust that made it work. Whenever you have a new systems, especially the new mechanical heat recovery systems that are technically as advanced and new as we have, there's always hiccups in the beginning. Um, but probably a lot less than would be normal, although the occupants wouldn't think so. Um, we had to train a lot of our people in the maintenance of the new systems. But uh, once we got through that initial commissioning and had things going, they've been pretty smooth. Things have been working very well. There are higher energy efficient buildings with energy efficient windows and saves the garrison in the long run a lot of money and just energy costs. Just to bring people from the various installations to Grafenbeer to train and leave, transportation costs alone were in excess of $25 million a year, which right now what happens is soldier lives on post, he goes into the front door of the um, company ops, he's got a huge locker in there, we call them the NFL style lockers, where all his TA-50, which is his combat gear, he changes there, he goes out the back door right, right into his vehicle, backs up to the dock, opens the back door to the arms room, loads up, drives out, does his training, comes back, reverses it, walks out the front door, and he's on his own time. And it's a much higher quality of life for the soldiers, training is more efficient, we save that 25, more than 25 million a year in transportation costs. Um, and we have much better facilities than the soldier used to have. It was a great experience working here. It was the largest construction buildup of its kind since the post-World War II buildup over here in Europe. And for me, it was personally a great developmental challenge, which we met with our partners from the Corps and the BDS. But as far as lessons learned go, the, the thing about getting the right people in the right place and trusting them to do their own thing um, is the only way this worked. And that's how we have to operate in the future, especially with the continued constraints on money.